Kitty Cubs, what's brew and welcome back to the channel and thank you so much for being here. I was a little bit busy this past week so I haven't really dipped in too much with Chantel so this is going to be a little bit of a catch up with just a point here or there through a few of her lives uh, because I know there's been a lot going on, apologies for being a bit late but it was the last week of this part of the term and I'm off for two weeks now which is pretty cool uh, but it was a lot as it always is in that last week. So foodie's been going off, which I know is a surprise to no one, but let's get this bit out of the way first. She did say on several occasions, uh, a couple of times in the Missy Moo uh, deleted thing, because she's now not friends with Missy Moo anymore, and um, once a little bit later where she, I'm not sure if she realizes that the Milky Chai person on TikTok, or she might have a YouTube as well actually, and me are separate people. <laughs> because <laughs> you know she likes to say names incorrectly so that she's not advertising even though she's totally advertising um she did get a little bit confused during her references but the first time she was like oh the woman in the wig which hi there um so she did mean me but she asserted that she had proved me wrong okay literally name a rumor i've dispelled it i've literally proven things don't worry like if you know what I, I really don't want to show my marriage certificate but if i really have to i will and then but the thing is i show it and then people will be like it's photoshopped so I'll call the authorities then like it's easy to find out we're married plain and simple that milky tea person whatever the, her name with the wig there who thought she was so right about everything and i had to react to her video going to expose me carolina for what I have, there's nothing to expose i'm still waiting to be exposed by sam's bar lounge by the way carolina so who's going to expose me i always prove everybody wrong always <laughs> nobody even notices i guess or maybe that's why everyone's mad. They don't like that I'm right and they're wrong. Like, what's her face? Milk tea, the, the woman with the wig. Seriously, we're not married, really? Hmm. And look, oh no, she's she's proved people wrong so often. And look, uh, we are actually married. Um, excuse me, where? Show me those receipts, please. Because the only thing she ever did with me was say, your wig is bad, your eyeshadow is bad. Yes, we're married, there are loopholes. Baby, explain it because I don't exactly understand. That was all she ever showed us. And I really genuinely thought that I had uh, missed some receipts somewhere. Because like I said, I was in and out this week a little bit because it was busy. I was like, wait, I know she had threatened. I never actually believed it, but threatened to do like an expose video where she showed all the things. And I was like, oh, good, that sounds great. And then conveniently, she quit YouTube before we got there. And I was like, oh, I see. I wasn't really ever expecting it, but you know, she likes to pretend. So um, apparently she proved me wrong, which she absolutely didn't. Now, she's been very, very focused on what she said she proved wrong, which was the fact that she's married. Hasn't answered any of the other things I said, but that she's married. I believe they got a temp marriage. I believe, as Murad confirmed, they have a temporary one, which allows them to not get arrested for being together. But as I've said before, this doesn't allow her any of the rights or benefits of being a full legal wife. And it certainly wouldn't support a visa application, which we're going to talk about. I know you get sick of talking about it. I'm going to try not to harp on about the stuff I've already discussed. I did one recently um, that, what did I actually call the video? I, the, the thumbnail was like, go on, take the money and run. I remember that, but I don't actually remember what the title was. Sorry. So that I believe but I don't believe anything else. And something I haven't really discussed about the um, the visas after you get to the country are the security and the medical requirements because given that she's not fully married and she came in on a tourist visa, not a permit, um, I felt that those disqualified her enough that I didn't really have to focus in on those other things. I think I've mentioned them briefly. But it's relevant, particularly to this past week or so, because Foodie had a bit of a medical incident where she went to a clinic and she showed us a couple of shots of the inside. She didn't know how much it was going to cost. She showed her passport instead of her civil ID because somehow, even though she's claiming to have her civil ID or have it being processed right now, she doesn't have the number which she could easily show on the app. Whatever. So, you know, definitely, definitely happened, you guys. But this moment where I would have shown it, I didn't show it for no reason whatsoever. But what stuck out there is that she found the waiting area very cute, very inviting, so colourful. It implied very heavily to me that this was her first experience 
with uh, the medical services of Kuwait. And I think people would agree when they say that. But the thing is, once you get in the country, let's say for a second, just for a second, okay, they're legally married and she's getting sponsored. Let's ignore the fact that she already said she came in on a tourist visa and already described the fact that she was going to border hop when she needed to get a new one. They were going to do short travel trips. Let's pretend she got there. Once you get into a country, even if you're a dependent, even if you're not working, the requirements to get residency are actually exactly the same as someone who's working with the exception of instead of having like a contract from your employer, you have the person sponsoring you, who uh, who in this case would be Salah. So instead of my um, educational certificates to prove I was qualified to do my job, Uh, she would need her marriage certificate and I believe it would need to be attested by the Syrian embassy because as they confirmed in the last live, uh, Salah is Syrian and not stateless because she was making that point. So he would need that attested by his embassy and she would take that instead. But the requirements to make sure you are safe as a person to exist in the country do not change just because she can't work which means that in order to get her residency, she would have had to have bought a police check from Canada showing her uh, criminal activity records and making sure she didn't have a criminal record. And I had to do this in Saudi Arabia. I've done it in England before, but because I had lived in Saudi Arabia for three years, when I came to Oman, if you were with me um, when I was making the move from Saudi to Oman, I was only in the UK for a week and I couldn't have gotten a police certificate in that time. And as I'm saying this, I'm really annoyed because I meant to check what the lead time was for a police certificate check in Canada. I'm going to check that in post and I'll put it somewhere here, but I'm guessing she probably couldn't have got it within the time she was home. Editing milk here, leaving you with this just beauty of a screenshot. (laughs) I, I hope you're enjoying the freeze frame. It's top notch. Um, I did check the requirements and I'll show you the uh, website in a moment, but basically it can take anywhere from three working days to 120, depending on if manual processing is needed. And manual processing can be used even when there's no criminal record present. The site does also warn of delays uh, due to COVID-19 because of course, And after she received it, um, she would have to add extra time for delivery and then go and get it attested. So I'm not convinced she could get it in the time with all of those caveats. However, it is technically possible she could have. I think it's six to eight weeks for... um for police checks in England, it could be eight to 12. I got very lucky in Saudi that it was about three weeks because I was doing it in person with the police um, the police office. And then I physically took it to MOFA, which was the attestation um, office for Saudi Arabia. MOFA is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But Foodie would need a police certificate to show that she didn't have a criminal record because they don't let criminals in. And she then would have had to take that record to uh, whatever the office is in Canada that attests these things. Remember, she was only in Canada for about four weeks before she flew back. Now, after she got there and she had this criminal record and she went to the correct office to get her fingerprints and get it you know, sorted out and checked and all of the rest of it, she would have had to have a medical. And the medical would have been quite extensive because they're checking for certain things. Now, I believe before I went to Saudi, yes, before I went to Saudi, I had a blood test to prove I didn't have an infectious disease and then I had a full medical after I got there, yeah? She would have needed to have a full medical, which would have been, it includes a lot, it's um, height, weight, blood pressure, EKG, uh, chest x-ray, because they're checking for TB and stuff, uh, pregnancy tests for women, a urine sample and a stool sample. The stool sample is something I didn't have to do in China, but I've had to do everywhere in the Middle East, yeah? When you consider that, one, it does not make sense that the um, medical facility she went to for the illness she had would be new and exciting. She would have already gone through quite a number of medical procedures by then. 
And two, knowing what we know of Foodie, knowing how little actual content she's got to fill her time with, knowing that the cats have been a topic of conversation and she'd love to distract from them, even though she keeps bringing them up. Do you think, even if she wanted to be private, do you think we could have escaped, even if we'd wanted to, some kind of description of what she had to go through there? Even the fact that I was so tired, guys, I had to give a sample. It was so difficult because they're not easy to give. They don't give you like a box. You have a stool sample uh, cup. It's slightly bigger than the urine one, but not by much. It takes some maneuvering and it takes a certain amount of planning, digestively speaking, which is something she's never been great at controlling. Sorry to be a little bit gross with the details, but it's not pleasant to go through. And I don't believe for a second <laughs> I don't believe for a second she could have helped herself but talk about it. These things also take a little while to process. The security check, I think, that she would have to do and present a police certificate and stuff would take about a week. And then the, um, the medical usually takes a week or so to come back. And if you've got complications, then you might have to go back and have something else checked. A friend of mine who works here had a complication that came up on his chest x-ray and then he had to go back and re-get it done. Turned out that it was just an error on the first one and he was fine, thank goodness. But they have to have the right one. They have to show that it's completely clear in order to move forward. Um, with me, the only uh, feedback I got was, hey, your iron is on the low side, which is fairly normal for me. It just reminded me to go and get some iron supplements. So they do check and follow up with these things. So she would need her fingerprints form. I actually did mine digitally in Oman, but I was looking up in Kuwait and I believe you have to physically go and do them at an office. That might have been an older set of information. Maybe they've updated it since. I know with COVID, a lot of things came in, but she would have to provide her fingerprints somewhere. She'd have to have a security paperwork. She would have to have her medical paperwork. And you have to apply to the... Um, to the people for your civil ID within a month of getting there, which she's halfway through that right now. So it just doesn't really make sense with the peripheral experiences she showed us with her account of her medical stuff, that she had gone through these things and therefore had been able to apply properly for her civil ID. Now, we've been new because she's still on a tourist visa and I'll say it again. Uh, therefore she couldn't have done any of these things. But if I were to take that completely out of the equation, she still probably couldn't have done these things because they take long enough and she wasn't in Canada for long enough. And it's not just one step that matters. There are so many steps you have to go through and we're seeing absolutely no evidence. And I don't think she's capable of keeping these things private. But while we're on the point of proof, I've always shown my proof. I've always shown my receipts, whether she's been willing to read them or not. So I do find it particularly hilarious that she's like, oh, I think I might prove it and has shown nothing because she's very, very quick to ask for proof from other people. And I have cited my sources. I have shown the websites. I have shown the government requirements. She has shown precisely nothing. So don't let her rewrite this particular part of the narrative and take her protests that, no, no, it's true, you guys, and mix it up with the idea that she's proven something because she absolutely has not. Uh, what else happened? Her phone, what a waste of $1,700. I can believe it was $1,700 because with important stuff. Um, when Salah was talking about the price, he did say $1,700 and then new, which sort of implied that it wasn't new to me. Not that it particularly matters. It's still going to be a big old chunk of change to be wasting right now. Um, I don't actually care too much whether Foodie or whether Salah paid for it. But I would say if Foodie transferred the money to Salah to support them and then Salah bought her a present, whether he physically paid for it or not, it was her money. Um, but that money really should be going to your taxes, my love. Mm -hmm. Connected to that, she wouldn't be able to uh, sign up for her own contract without her civil ID. They demand it when you sign up and you usually have to give a fingerprint as well. Now, there are ways around this. Um, she could get a phone that was bought outright from some source and she could be on Salah's plan. She could have a temporary plan from the airport that she's just updating like a prepaid so she wouldn't need a contract. And I know that they have a... Um, 
a Wi-Fi dongle that you put the, the SIM card in, you just get data from that she's been using. So there's a number of ways around it, but um, she cannot physically have a contract in Kuwait without her civil ID being in place. Um, there was Missy Moo drama. Apparently, they are now officially broken up. Um, how many more of these need to happen before you start reflecting on yourself? I mean, really. Because it does seem like an unusual percentage of Chantel's friends end up doing this, end up very, very publicly going against her. In which case, I would either start looking internally and saying, okay, Maybe I should look at better quality friends and not trust randos on the internet as easily. Or maybe I'm doing something that's using up all these people and pushing all these people into these situations. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, there's been a lot of backlash against Missy Moo in terms of, no, no, you're not welcome in the community, darling. Um, which I'll let everyone else fight out. I think she's done enough. I think they've all done enough to just be like, nah, you can just stay over there. Thank you. But don't get me wrong, I'll be here for the tea. Speaking of tea, she's been threatening to release DMs. <laughs> Chantal is already trying to do like damage control, saying like, no, 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 I didn't tell her anything I haven't already discussed. Which also lends credence to all the other things. When she says, no, no, I'm private. Honey, when you rage, nothing is private. You just keep going. And if she could have shown proof at this point, she would have long before now. But when you consider it's been Shannon, it's been S-Jam, it's been Missy Moo, have there been others? Like, there's been a fair number of people here. Like, when will you learn? Clearly, self-reflection is not your strength, but when you're going to learn? She was angry about a lot of things this week. Um, YouTube versus TikTok was a big conversation. So she's sick of YouTube. She hates YouTube. YouTube is, is awful. But she came back onto YouTube to have that ramp because she's got a bigger audience and gets paid more on it. So she's fine going live, even though she's supposed to have quit, but she's back because of course she is. She's fine going live to say that um, so long as they're paying her. But no, the platform's terrible and I'm switching to TikTok, which she has tried and started to do, but clearly doesn't make her any money. And she's very annoyed that there are people on TikTok bringing the YouTube stuff over to TikTok so that it can't just be deleted and forgotten because she does like a dirty delete, uh, which is why she is particularly annoyed at, um, remember the name, Milky Chai. I should have remembered that name, sorry. Um, she's particularly annoyed at Milky Chai because Milky Chai has quite a big audience on TikTok, it seems, and was like, hey, dudes, this is what she's been doing on YouTube. So she couldn't just reinvent herself there, which is what she wanted. She wanted to close the book on YouTube and reinvent herself on TikTok. And I do not think she is going to find TikTok to be a more forgiving platform. Let's just put it that way. But I will find it amusing trying to see her earn money on it. She had yet another massive community post about the vet visit that she was supposed to take BBJ to. Having one visit planned months later does not justification make, and that's as much as I'm willing to go into that. During one of these rants, when she was talking about how Salah paid for the phone, which might be physically true, hell, even if he earned the money and bought it for her, it seems like a massive waste when she has a perfectly good phone. Like, I get the sense, and this is not a judgment, I'm not judging where he is in the world, because, you know, he can keep a roof over his head, and hers apparently, and he can keep up with their takeout orders and he can do the things he needs to do. So fair play him. And we know that he has had jobs. We know that he's, he's supported himself. So, you know, no dig there. But it doesn't seem to me that their cash overfloweth. And as I say, that's not a judgment. It doesn't need to. But I think a $1,700 phone is a considered purchase for most people. And the fact that it wasn't particularly uh, considered, the fact that it seems to be bought on impulse, whether by her or whether by him, suggests to me she had a hand in it because she does tend to go for impulse purchases. So that's all I'm going to say on the matter, really. But when she was talking about this, she goes, there's no poverty in Kuwait. And Jesus Christ, how naive are you? There are no poverty stats in Kuwait. They don't officially release the numbers. 
That is why there's no official poverty in Kuwait. Of course people are poor. Are you mad? Of course people are poor. There are poor in every country. In Saudi Arabia, when you say like, oh, there are no beggars, there's no vagrancy. In Saudi Arabia, they made it illegal for people to beg. So what you used to get is people with uh, like very, very cheap items like um, chewing gum or something along those lines that they'd scrape together to buy some stuff and then they'd come and ask you to buy them and you would give them as much as you wanted to give them. You'd give them a donation um, in exchange for this chewing gum so that they couldn't be arrested for begging. You know, you know the really, really cheap plastic toys or, um, or chewing gum or sometimes you'd see people selling fruit. Like just things to avoid them getting picked up for begging, but they would hang out outside of shops or they'd come into some little malls if they could get away with it and they would try and beg slash sell you the items. That's how you got around that. It doesn't mean there's no poor in Saudi Arabia. It just means that that's how they dealt with it. The same is going to be true in Kuwait and the same is going to be true in any country in that region. At one point, somebody asked, um, have you had any lovers quarrels with Salah? And she immediately said, that's private. And I was like, of course. And then she goes, I would never do to him what I did with Chef Crap, like implying all the stuff that uh, she did online with him and the back and forth. And I'm like, excuse me, does everyone else re remember the moment when they were broken up for half an hour and she came online and was like, it's over. And if he doesn't love me now, he never did. I remember that. Excuse me, excuse you. I swear she convinces herself that her own lies are true. This is the problem because then she moves forward as if they are true and she, she trips herself up. Um, she did have a long rage video, which I believe might actually still be up. Um, lots of rage over Missy Moo, over reactors, over the hater community. Uh, lots and lots and lots of personal insults, which she gets insulted a lot. So I'm like, okay, you want to insult my leg wig? You want to insult my eyeshadow? Do what you want. Like, no opinion she has is important enough to me to bother me. Yeah, so let her insult my appearance. She didn't particularly target me in this, so ju just so we're clear. But I get that people say things and she gets to say things back. I've never disputed that. But I do think it's a little bit rich. <laughs> Foodie, the mirror, darling. Step away from the mirror. It's about to hit you in the face. Foods. She spent a large amount of time uh, commenting on people's weight, appearance, and actions, and then complaining that people do that to her. Like, nobody is right for doing it, but don't do it and in the same breath say people can't do it to you. The hypocrisy of it, it's nothing new. We know it's nothing new, but come on now. If it's wrong, it's wrong, but she has a tendency of just being, well, it's wrong if it's not me which is really her life, isn't it? Um, there was nothing particularly new in that rage. It's the most recent video, but there was nothing particularly new in it. I've covered any talking points already, so I'm just gonna leave it there. But if she's going to indulge in it herself, then she gets what she gets and she has to accept it. If she wants to set a better example, as she claims she does, she claims she wants to rise above, she claims she wants a positive channel, then you're gonna have to walk that particular path before you expect people to follow you. Okay, and that's about all I have for you today. Uh, Ramadan is due to start soon. The rules and the strictness of the rules do increase a little bit during Ramadan. In terms of your behavior, you have to be more circumspect. So it'll be interesting to see how foodie proceeds um, as Ramadan gears up, but uh, I'm sure we will, we will see it all come to a head. Okay, everybody, thank you so much for listening and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.